Ohio went to Toledo as a, uh, we had this. We picked this game at two and a half. We both put, picked them to win and cover, and they dominated this game pretty much. I mean, they they looked really good. Parker Navarro made good decisions. They were able to run the ball a little bit. That defense just played awesome. Just played awesome, man. Tim Albin continues to find ways to win with the Ohio Bobcats in many different ways, and now Ohio is uh, all of a sudden looking. Like a pretty strong contender here in the MAC as we head into Week 14. It was good to see firing on all cylinders there. Uh, obviously, you know it was a close game until that that fourth quarter there. You really kind of opened things up. Yeah, big win on the road for Ohio. You're six to one in conference. You've got a couple of nice wins. Um, you really started to really get things going, especially on the ground in the second half was nice. Um, like Tyus is a monster, you know. <clears throat> excuse me, Parker Navarro playing efficient football, 11 of 19 through the air, over 100 more on the ground. And if you can run the ball for 54 times and play good defense, right, that's exactly where you want to be if you're Ohio and if you're the Bobcats there in the MAC, especially going on the road against a talented football team. I know there's been disappointing season for Toledo so far, but I think this is something for Ohio to, to be super excited about because you have – I think Ball State next week, and you got a chance to basically, you know, Detroit on Destiny, going to the MAC, which is awesome, and end up playing Detroit there in the Motor City. So, yeah, I, I liked Ohio on this one. I liked them a lot to put them on my, 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 my best bets. I'm sorry, but regardless, it's awesome. This is exactly what I wanted to see from my Bobcats there, and they got it done. And, I mean, you're looking at the only three losses of the season were, you know, on the road at Syracuse, on the road at Kentucky, and then on the road at Miami, Ohio, right? And In that Kentucky game, that, game was without Navarro, too, so it was like... Yeah, I mean, they got spanked, right? I'm not sure how much of a difference that makes, but... And uh, Navarro played pretty horrible in that Miami-Ohio game, and it took, like, you know, a second half where they scored 20 points to even make it a ball game in Miami, where it looked like Miami-Ohio kind of dominated that whole game. Uh, Brett Gabbert threw three touchdowns in that game. Mosey ran for over 100 yards. I, I think if Ohio gave their B game in that game, I think they would have had a chance to win. Like I, I think Ohio, Ohio can absolutely win this whole thing. I know Miami, Ohio is playing really good football. And we, we talked about it. I mean, how many times did we talk about it? Like when they lost those first couple of games of the season at Northwestern, Cincinnati, Notre Dame, and then Toledo on the road. So you lose four of your first five games. And we talked about it after the next week. You're like, yeah, I'm hammering Miami, Ohio to beat Eastern Michigan. And then that kind of started them on this run of winning, you know, six straight ball games. And now that they have a chance to make the MAC championship, although they do play against a Bowling Green team on the road. I mean, it's um, – that's not going to be an easy matchup. Bowling Green is insanely talented, but we'll see if this defense can continue to dominate. I mean, they have not let up more than 21 points in conference since the Toledo game all year. So good for uh, good for Miami, Ohio. But yeah, this MAC is starting to shape up, and it looks like Ohio is a real, real contender in this thing. And when you're looking at the futures. Conference championship winners, you look at the MAC, Ohio's plus 180. So it's not crazy to, uh, if you think that they're going to beat the snot out of Ball State, it feels like you might be getting Ohio money line at plus 180 against either Bowling Green or Miami of Ohio. Actually, technically, Buffalo can still make the MAC championship. Also, Ohio is a team that has been just devastated in the portal, too. There are nine players on their roster last year they lost to go play power five football there. Curtis Rourke also, you know, notably of the of the guys they lost, you yeah. know, Cross as well. Obviously the running back, Bangura. It it's been a really, really impressive um actually eleven. There's eleven, you know, <clears throat> guys that are playing power five football right now that were on this Ohio team last year. So they were a team that you got to give and Tim Allen deserves a ton of credit every year, but he's been exceptional, exceptional this year. 
I agree. So good work from Tim Album, as always, right? As always.